It's good to have you in our Sunday School lesson for the 14th of April, 2024. And our topic is Jesus heals and gives life. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Jehovah God, for this important message that you have given us for your people. I bring myself before you, Jehovah God, and pray that you help me, for without you I can do nothing. Lord, I pray for your people, O oh God, that you circumcise our ears, circumcise our hearts, that we will receive the engrafted word of God, that it will prosper us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us take our first reading from Mark chapter 5, Mark 5, 25 to 27. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Okay. Let us also see Isaiah 33 and verse 24. Isaiah 33, 24. And the inhabitants will not say, I am sick. The people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity. Okay. The Bible, our topic today is Jesus heals and gives life. I have news for you. Healing is still happening. Miraculous healing. Miracles. They still happen today. All over the world. Don't let anybody deceive you and say, oh, it doesn't happen anymore. That's a lie. Some people might even, because of the experiences they have had, oh, I have been here, I've been to that crusade, I've been to that one, I wasn't healed. And I know other people who have similar experiences, therefore, no. God doesn't work with your, on your experiences. God is God. And until Jesus returns, the New Testament is still true. Praise the Lord. What is the perfect will of God? The perfect will of God is not healing. Healing is the permissive will of God. What does that mean? You prepare three meals a day for your husband and your children and your wife, your family. Every day, three times, three meals a day. That is what we perceive as normal. But if things become difficult, money is not as available as it was or as you expect it to be, then people cut down to twice a day. That is not the perfect will of the man of the house. That is permissive will. He is dancing to the available economic circumstances. That's what he's doing. Bible says, the inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick, because they're not sick. The rest of the verse says, because he will forgive their iniquities. We'll come to that. But because sin entered the world, then sickness, then death. But God's will is that we are divinely healthy. That is how it was in the Garden of Eden before sin came in. Jesus, who demonstrated the perfect will of God, was never sick. And in the new heaven and new earth, there won't be any sickness. Again, the tree of life again the tree of healing will be there there will be no sickness but for now let me tell you the fact that we hear that some people will fake heat or, or they share a lot of bogus testimonies and they hire people to come and testify we have that we've heard of that 
I don't know whether that is true or not, but because there is counterfeit doesn't mean the original is not longer there. And in fact, the presence of the counterfeit means there's original. In 1980, I was sick, very, very sick after my first year in uni. I came home and I was so sick. For weeks, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I became as thin as anything. Little children, they were between maybe seven years and maybe 13. That was when the Catholic charismatic movement came new to my village. They came and prayed for me. That was about 8 p.m. after their meeting. For the first time in weeks, I slept. When I woke up, it was 8 a.m. I had slept for 12 hours. And look, a lot of the symptoms had vanished overnight. I was healed. Gradually, I began to recover. That, that was the first time. I said, wow, ordinary prayer. Of course, we were born going to church, but I've never experienced that people prayed and people got healed. That was my first experience. The second night, they prayed. I slept again, and I got better, and I started joining them. That is when I began to see what was in the Bible, and that was what led to my repentance and being born again later. Healing is true, and it's still happening today. Now, let us differentiate between healing and miracle, because a lot of people don't know the difference miraculous healing and healing in the gifts of the of the spirit there is healing there is miracles but a lot of miracles take the form of healing that is why when people are prayed for a lot of times and they are not healed instantly or they don't see full manifestation, they think they are not healed. But testimonies abound of people who have been prayed for. And it looks like nothing happened. And they go home and they begin to feel better. So when it is healing, it doesn't have to manifest fully there and then. It can take days, sometimes months. But you notice that you're, you're progressively better with or without medications. That is healing. But when you're prayerful and it happens straight away, that is a miracle. Even though he has come in form of healing. Praise the Lord. Again, I can testify a few times when I was healed or people I know were healed miraculously or gradually. Now, we also need to differentiate between healing and deliverance and we're going to see that people can be unwell it can be mental it can be physically and they are prayed for and they got they get healed that is not the same as deliverance and we're going to see that towards the end of our study praise the lord Again, let me just mention a word about mental illness. Unlike what a lot of people think, every mental illness is not because of demons, no. Just like people have appendicitis, malaria, people can have a mental illness. It doesn't mean that that is because there are demons involved. A lot of people, because of stress and continued stress, they become anxious. From there, they can become depressed. From there, they can become psychotic, hear voices, all sorts of things. It can happen without any demonic involvement. Praise the Lord. Again, we're going to see that. Now, let us look at Matthew 17, verses 14 to 20. Matthew 17, 14 to 20. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, 
for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus answered them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Okay, he continues to say, how be it? This kind of a stubborn demon doesn't go out, but through fasting and prayer. The reason I'm bringing this is, there is a lot of abuse. People claim what they cannot do. Hey, bring them, be it a crusade. Blind will see. This one will happen. And they come. And nothing happens. Why is it so? Because we have we claim things that we do not, we cannot do. Jesus said to the disciples, by the time he came down, the disciples have been disciples have been sweating, casting out an epileptic demon. They couldn't do it. Jesus said, you never grow rich. Remember, they asked Jesus, why don't your disciples fast? Like the disciples of the Pharisees, he says, time never come. He says, a time will come when I am taken away from them. And they will fast in those days. That, they hadn't been fasting. That grace hadn't been taught them. So they had limited knowledge and they had limited power. Let me ask you, servant of God, has there been a time when you prayed for somebody and you believed by faith that that person was healed and they weren't? You're still growing. All of us are still growing and we need to recognize that and recognize our limitations. Otherwise, you're going to kill people. When you have prayed for somebody, say the person is diabetic, and say to the person, stop your medications because you're healed. I have faith. I know, believe. That is dangerous. Child of God, don't do that. If somebody has high blood pressure, for instance, and you pray and they have been healed, all it takes is just checking the blood, the blood pressure again. And if it's come down, it's come down. If it hasn't come down, they either have not been healed or the healing process has just started. I have had terrible experiences with this. I have lost some people who were dear to me. A cousin of mine had a stroke. He was a pastor. And their pastor had told him, oh, that's it, I'll pray for you, and you're healed. Throw away your medications. And that's what he did. The next time he had a re-bleed, a second stroke was in the church, and he died. He never woke up. He never woke up. I ask you, who killed him? Another lady was going to have a baby. And she had gone to the hospital. And the doctor has said, you have a cesarean section. You can't deliver this baby. Too big. Maybe. He's gone to the church and they have prayed. And said, don't worry, go home. You deliver the baby. By the time it was clear that she couldn't deliver that baby, it was too late. The woman died. Don't do that. The power is not yours. The authority was given you. But like the disciples in the portion that we have read, we are still growing. 
as we grow, we will see it. Somebody who is who was renowned for healing people or for the gift of healing, he said that he would pray for 10 people. Only one person would be healed. But he carried on. He would go and still look for people who are sick and he would pray for them. With time, he started getting two healed out of 10. At the time he was writing this testimony, he was getting seven people out of 10 healed. Eight people out of 10. He wasn't 100% yet. He wasn't there yet. We should learn. Somebody who has never healed a headache and you want to raise the dead, it doesn't work like that. Try. I don't say you shouldn't try. But don't deceive people. If it has not worked, remember, it is not your name at stake. No, it is not you. It is God. Tell them, I have prayed, I have done my best. God has not healed this person. It's not my fault. Exactly. You don't have anything to lose. People would appreciate that you told them the truth. When you have prayed for somebody and they are not instantly healed, ask them to go to the hospital. You will be saving a life. Sometimes when they call and say, go to the hospital, I'll come there and pray with you or for you. I walked in the hospital once. As we are looking for the vein of somebody who was just brought in, we are praying in tongues. As we are giving the injection, we are praying in tongues. And the result was very good. Who tells you that God does not use doctors? It talks about healing. And in fact, it talks about gifts of healing. Not just one. Not just when you lay your hands. Not just when you lay your hands. Somebody challenged me once. And he said, do you believe in divine healing? I said, 100%. He said, so why are you a doctor? <laughs> I said, because I never grow rich. I'm still growing. That is why. And when you do nurses who are Christians, who pray for people, are known to have better results than those that don't. Healing. Healing is true. Let us look at um, Mark 16, verses 15 to 18. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and eat. They will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise the Lord. Before we go to the next topic, are you sick? Don't stay home till you die. Of course, the first part of call will be prayer. That's what I recommend. Headache, pray. And it doesn't go. Go and look for help. Go and seek help. Seek help from the hospital. Seek help from a reputable place. God will still meet you there. I know a lot of people who have been healed right in the hospital bed. And they got their miracle in the hospital bed. I know a lady who was brought to my team. I was still a medical student then, a long time ago. And when others were relaxed in the presence of the lady during the ward round, I was uneasy. What is going on? I didn't know. Before we left that place, I sneaked back and said to the woman, can I come in the evening and pray with you? She said, yeah, 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 yeah. In the evening, I got busy. I didn't go. The next morning, she had had a stroke. She couldn't talk. God revealed it to me, but I didn't do anything about it. But I took up the challenge. I started praying every 15 minutes for four days. That woman recovered so quick. Everybody was shocked. Of course, they didn't know what was happening in the spiritual. I was praying. Healing is true. And it's still happening today. 
But having said that, the, the portion we have read in Mark 16, Jesus says we should go and heal the sick, among other things. Let me remind us, he wasn't talking to pastors, evangelists, apostles, prophets only. He was speaking to every child of God. Them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. That includes you and I. That includes you. Even if you have been, you became born again yesterday. Go. Testify. Pray. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You don't have anything to lose. And by the way, how would you know that you have the gift of healing if you haven't gone to pray and lay hands on somebody? How? We don't know. That command is there for every child of God to practice. Praise the Lord. Finally, let's look at Mark 5. Let's look at Mark 5, beginning to read from verse 1. Mark 5 from verse 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarene. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tomb. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. Go to verse 5. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tomb, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, He was trying to bind Jesus, eh? Go on. <laughs> for he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Yeah, go on. Okay. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Okay. Let's stop there for now. That is the a case of demon possession you can't heal somebody who is possessed by demons you cast out the demons as long as demons are there you're treating symptoms that is not healing that is deliverance praise the lord now let us say a few things about demons and deliverance when somebody has a demon or demonization, it doesn't mean immediately, in all cases, that the person is possessed. When you talk about possession, it means demons come and actually live in that person. That's what it means. The person, the spirit's person, the, person, the demon can come and stay in the man's spirit and begin to, and take over the mind, the soul and sometimes the body that is possession but the Bible says that anyone that is joined with the Lord is one spirit as long as you are a child of God and you have Jesus in your spirit you cannot be possessed no, you cannot be possessed but that does not mean you cannot have a demon involved. And therefore, number one, the demons can attack your emotions, whether from outside or from there in your soul, even as a child of God. And they begin to make your mood go up and down. They begin to oppress you. They begin to make you. Now you're angry. Next time you are happy. The demons can harass somebody. Either through your dreams. Or even when you're awake. You see some people they don't have peace. And they don't know why. There is so much harassment. There is so much harassment. Some people can turn to 
using drugs or drinking alcohol, thinking that they will get peace there. There is harassment. That's another level. The other level is oppression. You can be oppressed by demons. Um, Jezebel said to Elijah, Elijah, he said, by this time tomorrow, I'll get you. You'll be dead. That was harassment. Remember, Jezebel was the daughter of uh, the Sidonian king. That woman was that woman was equipped with demonic powers. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah had to run. That is demonic oppression. And then we therefore go for go to uh, compulsion. Compulsion. You see the person, he can't hold himself. He's always drinking alcohol or use drugs. Eh? They're addicted to something. That can be demonic uh, uh, manifestation. And therefore, you can now go to total possession. Like the man in the tomb. That one demon had taken him over completely. And he, need, he needed to be cast out in the name of the Lord. We, we don't have a lot of time to, to go into detail about some of these things. But healing is true. And it's still happening today. And Jesus has commanded you and I as Christians to go and heal. And it doesn't matter how much we talk. People want to see at least something that is extraordinary. And you and I have it. And we can give it praise the Lord. Let us pray. If you are not a child of God, don't even bother. If you have not repented, don't even bother going to pray for people. You're wasting your time because the gift cannot come. Go and be a doctor or a nurse or any other thing and treat people that way. But if you want to repent and become a child of God, say this prayer after me, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Cancel my name from the book of death. Write it in the book of life. Give me your Holy Spirit. And let me live for you until I see you face to face in heaven. Thank you, Father, for these ones. Accept them to yourself and give them the opportunity, the grace, Lord, to grow even in the fear and knowledge of you. And for the rest, Jehovah God of us, and them too, for anybody that is sick, Lord, I pray that you stretch forth your holy hands and heal. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.